Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new PCP pistol from Diana, the Bandit. So the guys, the Bandit was announced at Chacho 2018. We took a look at it there. Uh, it comes in a nice little soft case. You get the foam inside, uh, kind of similar to the soft case that the Chaser came with that we already reviewed. But opening it up, you get your manual here. Now you get the gun itself, you have a magazine. Now this is a 22 right here. This is a seven shot magazine. And then you get your bag, uh, some O-rings, and then of course your fill probe here as well. Uh, one thing to note about the fill probe, just like the Storm Rider, you have a quick disconnect on the end, which I love. That's an awesome little add on. So guys, getting the Bandit out here, go ahead and pull it on out of the foam and set this guy aside. Now the Bandit, of course, like I said before, PCP pistol here. Uh, fills to 200 bar, so about 2,900 PSI there. And you do have your gauge on the front. Now, uh, while normally I'm not a huge fan of gauges that sit on the front of air cylinders like this, uh, this isn't so bad because the muzzle's way past uh, the gauge, so you can actually get a good look at it without pointing the muzzle at yourself, which is nice. Uh, and on that cylinder as well, it's a 50cc cylinder. Uh, you have your fill porthole as well, so you just take that probe, stick it in, it can go in from either side. Uh, I have seen a couple of these where the configuration is like with the hole on the bottom, so you do have to put it in from the bottom, but you're going to have clean access to it and then be able to get your quick disconnect on there without a problem. So starting up front with the gun here, aside from the air cylinder, uh, you do have a fixed suppressor on this guy. Now this is going to make things really nice and quiet, which is great uh, because obviously without it, it's going to have a little bit of a bark. So this should take most of that out for us. Uh, and that leads back into our fixed blade front sight uh, on a nine and a half inch roughly rifled barrel. Uh, and of course it's all blued. So it's got a pretty nice kind of like classic metal wood look to it. And then coming back to our breech, it's going to look pretty familiar to most of you guys if you've watched the Storm Rider or our Chaser review as well. Uh, this is all of the same lineage, so made in China uh, by Snowpeak, uh, but with, you know, again, it's got a lot of nice features for the dollar, you know, a sub $200 PCP pistol um, with this many features on it is not really available currently in the market, so this should be a pretty interesting product if it shoots well. Uh, but as we roll back to the breech, you'll notice we have an 11 millimeter dovetail up top, an adjustable rear sight for both windage and elevation, uh, as well as a bolt action. Now it comes with the single shot tray installed, and like I said before, also comes with the magazine. This is a seven round here in 22, nine rounds in 177. You're going to get the single shot tray either way. Uh, but having that bolt on the left hand side, I find it really convenient for getting those quick follow up shots. And I do believe, as I said for the chaser when we reviewed it, that there are going to be right handed breeches available for you lefties out there as well. And guys, as we move down to the trigger, uh, you certainly can decock this gun just like the Storm Rider or the Chaser. You just hold the bolt back, pull the trigger, you hear it click there, and you are all good to go. Uh, the trigger does have the safety on it, and you guys can maybe see that red ring there around the outside letting you know you're hot and ready to go. Uh, you just push it on through to render the trigger safe. I'm not a fan of this style of safety, um, the kind of air arm style on trigger safety, not a fan. Uh, just a placement issue, not a function issue. Uh, and then the trigger itself, metal blade, which is nice, uh, and it does have the adjustment screw in there. So this is the DIT, Diana Improved Trigger. Improved over what, I don't really know, because again, this is the first version we're seeing. And what the adjustment does, I'm not exactly sure, because for whatever reason, Diana does not detail it in the manual, and they also didn't detail it in the chaser manual. So I really am not sure 100% without going inside of the guts of this gun what it does, but we're going to review it in stock form. That's what we do for everything. We don't adjust it. We want to see how it comes out of the box. And then from the breech guys and the trigger, uh, you're moving back into this grip now. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is a very beefy grip, all right? It's very large. Uh, there's a lot of mass to hold on to here. And this is where you're getting a lot of the weight of the gun from. Um, to be honest with you guys, this grip does not fit my hand very well. Uh, you know, it's just a little too big on the back strap for me. I have plenty of room here down at the bottom, uh, but if you have bigger hands than, the, than I do, this is probably not going to be a problem. Uh, but know that if you have small hands, that there may be a little bit of sanding necessary to get a comfortable grip on it. And the one thing I notice immediately is that the reach to the trigger is a little long for me. So that's probably going to come into play when we shoot it for accuracy. I, I have a sneaking suspicion from having shot a fair number of PCP air pistols before. Uh, the ergonomics, like I said, for me, just not there, but it is a fully ambidextrous grip. So the lefties out there, again, uh, shouldn't have any problem getting down on this. 
so the bandit is going to work whether you're right-handed, left-handed. Uh, if you want to change the breech, that should be available at some point down the road. So before we head out to the range, guys, I want to show you how to take off the rear sight. Uh, but I also want to tell you guys, you're in for a little bit of a treat today. We are not only looking at the 22, but we are also looking at the 177 bandit as well. So we're dual wielding bandits today. Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys will notice this is our 177 right over here that we've gone ahead and mounted a Leapers 2-7 to seven, uh, pistol scope here, uh, which gives you that longer eye relief so you can hold it at arm's length and get a good picture out of it. Uh, that 7X should give us a pretty good uh, close-up of what we're doing downrange when we shoot the accuracy portion. Uh, but to go ahead and be able to mount this, you do need to remove the rear sight from the dovetail. So to do that, you are going to need a screwdriver. This is exactly the same as we showed you guys with the chaser. Uh, so if you watch that video, you can probably skip over this. But if you haven't yet, flathead screwdriver, you take this guy off. And as you do, you just want to be careful once you get him loose. There's a spring under there that you don't want to go flying out. So you make sure you hold on to everything. You take that spring off, pull that screw out. And then we're going to go ahead and switch our screwdriver over to a Phillips head. And I have one screw in the back, one screw in the front. We get those guys out of there. And this rear sight unit will come right off. Real quick before we go to the range, we're going to show you how to load the magazine. We have the 177 here. First thing you're going to do is go ahead, take the face, rotate it counterclockwise until it stops. Once you get it there, you go ahead, flip it over, and you're going to insert your first pellet from the back end skirt first. So skirt down, goes right into there. You can see it in there now. And then the magazine's retained under spring tension. So I, I don't have to, that pellet's holding it in place. I don't have to do anything else but rotate that cover and drop pellets in. Really easy. And we drop those in head first. In this case, we have nine. In the 22, we have seven. And once you get them all loaded in there, you just go ahead, rotate it back. You go ahead, insert this into the gun. You're good to go shoot. All right, guys, so let's talk accuracy here for the Bandit. Um, our results, not too bad, starting with the 22 there. Uh, you got the H&N Field Target Trophies, uh, six out of seven here in a one-inch group there, and then all seven form about an inch and a half, 1.6-inch group. Uh, not great, guys. I really struggled to get all seven shots consistent, um, and some of that has to do with the, the grip here, and I'll show you that in a second. But uh, those JSB, the 15.89s, probably the best, again, six out of seven in one inch. Uh, an inch and a half overall with that seventh shot opening it up. Um, again, for me guys, you know, getting my hands, I don't have the biggest hands around this pistol, uh, even though I'm fully supported and getting that solid reach to the trigger, you can see the reach to the trigger for me is a little bit long. You know, I'm just catching it with really the tip of my finger there. Uh, but moving on to the 177, uh, the H&M Barracuda matches did fantastically. Uh, eight out of nine shots and three quarters of an inch is great. And this one flyer down here, which is probably me again, uh, just opens it up to seven eighths of an inch. So not too bad at all. Uh, and the JSB 10.3s again, uh, seven out of nine here are within an inch, uh, inch and a quarter overall. Not too bad. Those are the two best out of what we tested though. Again, that grip really not working for me um, on a personal level. And I would have liked to see better accuracy out of the 22. It's certainly good enough for, you know, squirrels inside of that 25 yard distance. Uh, but you're definitely going to need yourself an optic to achieve that good accuracy downrange. And again, if you're a better pistol shot than me, I'm sure you're going to do better with the Bandit. So looking over our chronograph results for the Bandit, guys, uh, one thing you'll notice right away, very large extreme spreads in both calibers. But uh, the consistent theme there is that you're looking at about two magazines per fill. So, uh, and that's with, you know, those larger extreme spreads. If you narrow that window to like using it between 180 bar 
and let's say like 140 bar, you're gonna get a much tighter extreme spread. So if you're looking for your best accuracy, I would keep it within a more refined pressure range when you're shooting this guy. But for those of you that are just gonna be using this for plinking or maybe some pest control at short ranges in the backyard, you're gonna be looking at about two magazines off of a full fill. Uh, but 11 and a half and 14 and a half foot pounds respectively, not too bad in the energy department. And having that 50 cc cylinder guys, you know, again, two magazines, not too bad out of the bandit, but a big extreme spread. All right, guys, the Diana Bandit, not a bad offering, not the most impressive offering I've seen from Diana uh, in the past, but certainly a pretty good one, guys. Uh, if you think about it, this gun, in terms of a price point versus features perspective, offers uh, you a PCP pistol in a price range with the features that nothing else is even close to. You know, you're comparing this to the Marauder pistol or the 1720T from Crossman, uh, and these are significantly less expensive, uh, just as quiet. Uh, the trigger may not be quite as good as those two options, but you do get a magazine-fed gun, uh, smooth and reliable system there. I was actually really impressed with how smooth everything cycled. You have the option with the single tray. You can scope it if you want to. You have the open sights. Uh, it's got a lot going for it. The shot strings weren't amazing by any stretch, guys, but there's good power coming out of both of these, about 11 and 14 foot-pounds, respectively, in 177 and 22. That's pretty darn good power, uh, and you're going to get about two magazines worth of shots out of both calibers. So not a bad offering. Certainly some improvements could be made in both the trigger. I'd love to know exactly what that adjustment does. Uh, and that grip for me is just not working. Uh, your mileage might vary though. So, but something to keep in mind if you're gonna go ahead and pick up a Bandit, you know, that that grip is a little bit larger. Uh, so thank you guys for joining us today. The Diana Bandit, certainly an interesting one that you guys should check out next time you're on pyramidair.com. For The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys at the next one.